Hey everyone, my name is Mars, like the planet, and we are back for another cooking video. I really like making these videos because they are just an easy way to spice up your dinner or your lunchtime. I am first starting on making this pasta with roasted pepper. I'm going to cut open um, a red bell pepper. You could use any color that you want. I'm just going to slice it in two and then put it on a baking sheet. I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees. I'm going to lay them face down and then give them just a little drizzle of oil and then pop that in the oven until they are nice and roasted and soft. Then I'm going to take a scallion and separate the whites from the greens. I'm going to just roughly chop those. If you have seen my previous cooking videos, I am still working on my knife skills, so do not judge me. I'm just trying to chop them as evenly as possible. We are going to use the greens of the scallions for a garnish, and then we are going to cook the whites of the scallions. I am also going to be cutting up a Roma tomato. And I also want to mention that if you do have scallions and you don't use all of them, you can always pop them into some water without just leave the roots on. You can pop them into a glass of water and they will regrow and produce more scallions. So free scallions. <laughs> After I'm done chopping up that Roma tomato, uh, the recipe did call for lemon zest and I don't have a zester. Uh, so I tried to use a peeler and that didn't really work. So I just skipped that step, but I cut up the lemon cause we're going to be using the lemon juice later. I'm then going to cook my scallions with a tablespoon of butter and just get that nice and crispy. After the butter has melted and it is nice and bubbly, I'm going to go ahead on and add my tomatoes to the pot and incorporate that in. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe. That really helps out my channel. I'm on the way to be getting my channel monetized. So I'm really looking forward to getting a thousand subscribers. So if you just subscribe, that really, really helps out my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like cooking videos. I'm also going to add a little bit of cream cheese as well as sour cream to the pot. I'm going to add a cup of water and then just break that on down. This is going to create the cream sauce for our pasta. This does seem a little liquidy right now, but it will come together. Now that I have a pot of boiling water, I'm going to add in the tortellini. I almost burned myself, uh, so just be careful. And then I'm going to add in some mozzarella. No, I'm sorry. Then I'm going to add in some Parmesan cheese, a tablespoon of butter, and a few squeezes of lemon juice. My tortellini cooked up pretty quickly. I just got this from Walmart. It came in a package. It doesn't take that long to cook at all. And I think they're filled with cheese. Now that my peppers are done roasting, I took them out of the oven very carefully and I'm just going to slice those up. These should be pretty soft and they should slice pretty easily. If they're rough at all, that means they are not done and you want to put them back in the oven. Music 
after those are chopped up i'm just going to go ahead on and put them in the sauce and we are basically done with this recipe once it is incorporated you can see that the sauce has thickened up and then we are going to go ahead on and add in our tortellini i know that the pan is a little small but this is just a serving for two um i think we ate on this for maybe a day and a half or so this was just a little bit too much for two people but i thought that it turned out really good i really like this recipe and i thought it was pretty easy if you don't have roasted peppers you can also try a different vegetable or even trying broccoli or spinach or something like that i think using tortellini is a super easy way to spice up any pasta recipe i'm just going to top it with a little more cheese and then our green scallions And with that, we are all done. I really like this recipe, like I said, and I would definitely make it again. For our next recipe, we're gonna be making meatball subs with potato wedges. So I'm gonna first start off chopping up a white onion. And then I'm going to take some russet potatoes and cut them into wedges. And if you don't like potato wedges, you can also just cut these into more french fry shapes. I'm going to organize those on a baking tray and just drizzle some olive oil on top or any other light oil on top and then I'm going to season them with salt and pepper and just lightly toss it and then put it in the oven that is heated to 450 degrees until they are done and golden and crispy. I'm also putting a little bit of Italian seasoning on top as well. Then I'm gonna get my meatballs ready. I'm using lean ground beef and I'm just using the one pound package. I'm gonna cut that open and put that into a bowl. Then to make my meatballs, I'm just adding in a little bit of breadcrumbs. For seasoning, I'm using garlic powder, Italian seasoning, and black pepper, and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna wet my hands with cold water and then I'm gonna incorporate that. Cold water definitely helps the meat not stick to your hands and your hands won't get as messy. After that's incorporated, I'm just going to form up some meatballs. I'm just going to roll them in my hand and this one pound package of meat made about eight meatballs. Once they're all rolled, I'm just going to pop them in the oven with the potatoes and just cook them until they're brown. Now I'm gonna make some caramelized onions. I'm gonna put my white onions in a pot with some oil and these are gonna take a little bit of time. I want to put these on a medium to high fire and just first get them sweated out. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar because these are caramelized onions and I'm just going to let them cook. If you see that the pot is drying out, you can add a little bit of water and you're just gonna to continue to cook them until they are jammy and golden brown. I'm gonna remove those and set those aside and then my meatballs are done. Now, 
Next, I'm gonna be making the marinara sauce. I'm just gonna be taking some traditional pasta sauce. This is just the great value brand. It was perfect for me. And then I'm gonna be using a little bit of tomato paste. I'm also going to be adding this beef better than bouillon. This is really good just to add some easy flavor without making it hard at all. I have the chicken and the beef and I highly recommend them. Once again, I'm adding a little bit of sugar just to cut the acid of the tomatoes. I'm going to be adding some Italian seasoning as well as a couple bay leaves. And since this sauce is basically already cooked, it just needs to be heated. This doesn't need to cook for a long time. I'm just gonna let it simmer until the rest of the food is done. Now that my potatoes are done, I'm going to make sure I salt them. I'm gonna put a little bit of Creole seasoning on them. and then they are done. So now we are ready to make our sandwich. I'm gonna take these demi baguettes that I got from Walmart as well. I'm gonna cut them in half and then I'm gonna take the bread out of the center. This is just gonna help our sandwich stay together a little bit better and also I really don't like all the bread anyways, but I'm just gonna take the bread out of the center and then I'm gonna pop it in the oven just to toast it just a little bit. Once it is toasted, this only took a few minutes, I'm just gonna take a stick of butter and butter the outside as well as the inside. And now we are ready to plate. So I'm going to cut my meatballs in half just to have them sit better on the sandwich. I'm gonna put them face down and I'm going to put as many meatballs fit on the baguette. It was about six half meatballs, I guess. And then I'm going to put the sauce on top I'm just gonna spoon that over, and then I'm going to put the caramelized onions. And then I'm gonna take a bit of mozzarella cheese and put this on top. Now I just pop my sandwich in the microwave to melt the cheese, but you could definitely put it underneath the broiler if you would prefer that. So this is my finished plate. I thought this was really good. Meatball sandwiches are always a hit. They always knock it out of the park. This sandwich was very big. A half was perfectly fine for me. So we just ate this over two days. I would definitely recommend to make it. Next, I'm gonna make this gnocchi with chicken and bacon. If you don't know what gnocchi is, it is a um, potato basically that is rolled into a oval shape, I guess. The only time I really had gnocchi was at Olive Garden when it was in the chicken and gnocchi soup. So I just thought I'd try it because it was something different. So I'm just gonna take a couple pieces of chicken breast and lay them into a pan and then I'm gonna season them with just a little bit of garlic powder, salt, pepper, and Creole seasoning. And since these pieces of chicken are so thin, they really don't take that long to cook. And I'm just seasoning the other side. While that's going, I'm going to prepare my bacon. I just got this fully cooked, thick cut bacon from Walmart. This is the great value version. I'm not gonna use all of this and I'm just gonna take a few pieces out and just roughly chop those into bite-sized pieces. At this point, my chicken was basically done. So I took that and put it on the cutting board to rest. And then I'm gonna add my bacon to the exact same pot. 
while that's cooking my water had come to a boil and I'm going to cook the gnocchi um this is also the great value version it said on the directions to only cook it for two minutes so I was a little afraid to overcook it I didn't want it to get too soft but I honestly think I could have gone longer just because some pieces were soft and some pieces were a little too hard after my bacon is done, I'm going to be making my cream sauce. So I'm just going to make a simple sauce by melting some butter and adding a few tablespoons of flour. Then I'm going to whisk this just to get the butter to melt and incorporate it. You want to cook this down um, once the butter melts until it is golden brown just to make sure that the flour taste cooks out. that is golden brown and bubbly I'm going to add in a cup or so of milk you can honestly put as much as you want for as much sauce as you need but it should instantly thicken up with that roux you can see that it's starting to thicken up and I'm going to add a little bit more milk <laughs> Then I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of cream cheese. The recipe called for sun-dried tomatoes and I just had these left over. I don't think they make or break the recipe at all, but I just tossed those in just to get rid of the rest that was in the jar. I'm gonna just whisk everything together and then I'm gonna add some minced garlic. I'm gonna also season my sauce with some Italian seasoning and a little bit of sugar. You can see I like uh, sugar just to balance things out. But the seasoning is totally up to you. Now that my sauce has thickened up a little bit, I'm going to add in some spinach. You can do fresh spinach. I just got the chopped spinach from the frozen section. This is a good way if you have picky eaters just to hide some extra vegetables into your sauce. And then I'm also gonna add some Parmesan cheese. And with that, our sauce is pretty much done. I'm going to incorporate the bacon and the chicken back in. I'm just gonna cut the chicken up into small bites. And this chicken didn't really come out the best. I didn't brine it or marinate it or anything. So it was a little tough when we were eating it. So it was not my favorite. I honestly think that chicken thighs or boneless chicken thighs would have worked better, but my partner does not like chicken thighs, so we had to settle for chicken breast. But I do think that thighs would come out a little bit juicier. So I'm just gonna add that to the pot as well. And with that, our meal is done. This was okay. I think the sauce was pretty good, but like I said, the chicken was tough and the gnocchi was not cooked all the way. So I don't think I would try it again. Next, we are gonna be making chicken with a peach glaze. This was the very next day. So I was like, I'm gonna make sure that this chicken is not dry. So you could either brine or marinate your chicken. If you're brining your chicken, you just wanna put salt water on your chicken and just have it sit for about an hour. If you're marinating your chicken, I'm just gonna put some olive oil, some 
Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna season it with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to cover it in apple cider vinegar. I'm also gonna add garlic powder too. Then I'm gonna be making homemade mashed potatoes. So I'm just gonna take the rest of the potatoes that I had from when we made our meatball subs and I'm just going to cube these up. I wanna make these as small as possible just because we are making mashed potatoes. So I don't want these potatoes to take forever boiling in the water. I also have a pot of water um, just heating up on the stove next to me, but this is also a perfect time to practice your knife skills or if you have a young chef in the kitchen that wants to chop some things up, this is a perfect time to do so just because the cuts don't have to be perfect and you can practice. After my potatoes are all chopped up, I'm just going to add them to a pot of boiling water and then I'm going to add a generous amount of salt just because the potatoes can take it and they really don't have any flavor so you need to salt them and I'm just going to let them cook until they are fork tender. Once they are all done, I'm going to add a couple splashes of milk and then I'm going to make potatoes. I actually don't have an actual tool to make mashed potatoes. I just use the end of a cup and that works perfectly fine. And if they're soft enough, they should just mash perfectly. This is also a fun activity for kids to get involved because they can easily mash the potatoes. Just be careful because the pot is very hot. Then I'm gonna add some salt and pepper as well as some garlic powder. And then I'm gonna also add a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just gonna incorporate that all in and I'm gonna just taste it just to make sure it has enough seasoning cause potatoes are a little bland. So you just wanna make sure you season it properly. And I like mine pretty chunky with the skins on it and that is all done. Now that my chicken is done marinating, I am going to add it to a skillet. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil and then I'm gonna let it cook until I see those lines on the chicken. So this browned up beautifully. I thought that it turned out really nice and I think the chicken was a lot more juicy than the last time. Next, I'm gonna be making my peach glaze. This is super easy to make. You can also use apricot, you can use cherries, you can use any type of jam that you find at the store or you prefer. I'm gonna use a little bit of minced garlic and then I'm taking these peach preserves. I'm just gonna use the rest that I have in the jar, but it's probably about a cup or a cup and a half. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey, a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce, and then a little bit of sriracha.
and then I'm just going to whisk that together. This is a recipe that I just came up with on my own. Um, I kind of deviated a little bit from the original recipe. So I will have the ingredients that I used in the description box if you're interested. I'm going to also add a little bit of sugar. Once that is nice and bubbly and incorporated, I'm then going to add the chicken back into the pot. We served this with a side of broccoli and I thought this was pretty good. I think that the marinade of the apple cider vinegar definitely added a tanginess. So it definitely tasted like a sweet and sour chicken. I highly recommend this if you just have a random jar of preserves that you need to get rid of or if you're interested in trying it out. Um, this was one of my favorites and I definitely think I'll keep making this in the future. So that does it for all of the recipes for this week. If you're interested in more, make sure you let me know down in the comments and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I post new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you guys next week. Bye.